This is StoryLink Radio. Our stories are presented before a live audience, then recorded for the StoryLink Radio podcast for your on-demand listening pleasure. Please visit StoryLinkRadio.com for show notes, to find out how to join our live audience, and for lots of free stuff, including free audiobooks and much more. This episode is the next chapter in Les Morts d'Arthur. Please remember to visit www.storylinkradio.com. Book 2, Chapter 12 How a Sorrowful Knight Came Before Arthur and how Balin fetched him, and how that knight was slain by a knight invisible. Within a day or two, King Arthur was somewhat sick, and he let pitch his pavilion in a meadow, and there he laid him down on a pallet to sleep. But he might have no rest. Right so he heard a great noise of a horse, and therewith the king looked out at the porch of the pavilion, and saw a knight coming even by him, making great dole. Abide, fair sir said Arthur. And tell me wherefore thou makest this sorrow. Oh, you may little amend me, said the knight, and so passed forth the castle of Meliot. Anon after there came Balin, and when he saw King Arthur, he alighted off his horse, and came to the king on foot, and saluted him. By my head, said Arthur, ye be welcome. Sir, right now, came riding this way a knight making great mourn, for what cause I cannot tell. Wherefore, I would desire of you, of your courtesy and of your gentleness, to, to, to fetch again that knight, either by force or else by his good will. I will do more for your lordship than that, said Balin. And so he rode more than a pace, and found the knight with a damsel in a forest, and said, Oh, knight, ye must come with me unto King Arthur. For to tell him of your sorrow. That I will not, said the knight, for it will scathe me greatly, and do you none avail. Sir, said Balin, I pray you make you ready, for ye must go with me, or else I must fight with you and bring you by force, and that will be loath to do. Will ye by my warrant, said the knight, and I go with you. Yea, said Balin, or else I will die therefore. And so he made him ready to go with Balin, and left the damsel still. And as they were even afore King Arthur's pavilion, there came one invisible, and smote this knight that went with Balin throughout the body with a spear. Alas, said the knight, I am slain under your conduct with a knight called Garlon. Therefore, Take my horse that is better than yours, and ride, ride to the damsel, and follow the quest that I was in, as she will lead you, and revenge my death when ye may. That I shall do, said Balin, and that I make vow unto knighthood. And so he departed from this knight with great sorrow. And so King Arthur let bury this knight richly and made a mention on his tomb how here was slain Herlus Le Barbius, and by whom the treachery was done, the knight Garlon. But ever the damsel bare the truncheon of the spear with her, that Sir Herlus was slain withal. Check back soon for the next chapter of Le Mort de Arthur. Thank you for listening to StoryLink Radio. If you like what you've just heard, we hope you will subscribe to our podcast and pass along our web address, www.storylinkradio.com. Be sure to visit our website for show notes, to find out how to join our live audience, and for lots of free stuff, including free audiobooks and much more. Join us next time for another story from StoryLink Radio.